Okay, so this is the introductory tutorial to acids and bases before we start getting into all the calculations associated with them. Basically, what I'm going to be doing here is detailing what acids and bases are and the different kinds that you can get. So I've just set up the page here. So we're talking about acids on the left hand side and bases, of course, on the right hand side. So we'll deal with the acids first. So basically, what is an acid? Well, according to our Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid, it's a proton donor. So they donate hydrogen ions. Now, there are different kinds of acids, too, to be precise. Uh, basically, we have strong acids and we have weak acids, not to be confused with concentrated or dilute. They're very, very different. So what are strong acids? Well, there aren't many examples of strong acids, but the three that really spring to mind and the three that you're going to be coming across the most are HCl, hydrochloric acid, HNO3, which is nitric acid, and H2SO4, which I'm sure you already know is sulfuric acid. But what are they? What do I mean by a strong acid? Well, all of these fully dissociate in solution to produce hydrogen ions. So what we can say is that every kind of molecule of HCl, HNO3, or H2SO4 dissociates to release all the hydrogen ions that they possibly can. So for example, when you put HCl into solution, every last molecule will dissociate into hydrogen ions and Cl-. Same for sulfuric acid, H2SO4. That will dissociate two hydrogen ions. So for every one mole of uh, sulfuric acid, it donates two moles of hydrogen ions. And then, of course, you've got your negative ion left over as well, which is SO4 2 minus. So guaranteed that whenever you put one mole of these in, you're going to get a full dissociation and it's going to release all the hydrogen ions. Just be careful with your H2SO4 because, of course, for every one mole here, that releases two moles of hydrogen ions. OK, so these are the three really that you need to be concerned with, but they fully dissociate in solution. That's your definition of a strong acid. OK, so they always give up all the hydrogen that they hold within the molecules. So moving on. Where does that leave us in terms of weak acids? Well, our examples of weak acids are phosphoric acid, H3PO4, hydrofluoric acid, and uh, ethanoic acid. So all our organic acids, our carboxylic acids, these are all classed as weak acids as well. What makes these different? Well, they do not fully dissociate in solution to produce hydrogen ions. They are still proton donors, but you can't guarantee that every single molecule will dissociate and release hydrogen ions into solution. So what we can say is that they exist in equilibrium. OK, some of the molecules remain whole, so they'll stay as HF or CH3, CWOH. Some of them will actually split up to release hydrogen ions and form the negative ion. So, for example, if we take ethanoic acid, what we can say is that it sets up an equilibrium with the ethanoate ion and hydrogen ions. OK, so not all of those will actually dissociate in solution. Some will remain as the CH3, CWOH, and the same can be said for any weak acid. So what we can say is because they're existing in equilibrium, there is a balance between the left hand side and the right hand side. OK, so we can apply kind of KC to this, or in fact, it's called KA, which we'll talk about in another tutorial, which is the dissociation constant, the equilibrium constant between our acid and, of course, the hydrogen ions that it releases. It's a way of measuring how many of these dissociate in solution. So definitions, strong acids fully dissociate. Weak acids do not fully dissociate. They exist in equilibrium. Now, the last thing I want to say about acids is that we can get different types. OK, basically bearing in mind how many hydrogen ions they release into solution. So we can have monobasic acids. Now, it sounds a bit stupid, monobasic, but it basically means that for every one mole of acid, it releases one mole of hydrogen ions, or it potentially could release one mole of hydrogen ions. A dibasic acid could potentially release two, so that's like H2SO4. And a tribasic acid could potentially release three hydrogen ions for each molecule, if you like, so like H3PO4. So know these kind of terms, monobasic, dibasic, and tribasic acids. It tells you basically how many hydrogen ions are released uh, from each molecule, okay?
So those are our different types of assets, strong and weak. Now, what we need to do, of course, is look at the flip side of things and check out bases. Well, according to Bronsted Lowry, um, these bases are actually proton acceptors. So you get the feeling that acids and bases, it's all about protons. It's all about hydrogen ions, okay? So bases accept hydrogen ions, okay? So that basically take them out of solution. They react with hydrogen ions, okay? So that's our definition of a base, proton acceptors. But just like acids, we can have two different forms. And yeah, you guessed it, we've got strong and weak acids. So we're gonna have strong and weak bases. So in terms of our examples for strong bases, most of the hydroxides, okay? So basically anything hydroxide, so group one hydroxides and group two hydroxides. So just as examples here, I've done sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and calcium hydroxide. So what makes these strong acids? Well, these fully dissociate in solution, so just like strong acids, but this time to produce hydroxide ions, okay? So these hydroxide ions are the things that act, of course, as proton acceptors. You know, these will kind of marry up with the hydrogen ions and form water. So when we write the equation for these, we can see that sodium hydroxide dissociates to form Na plus and a hydroxide ion and calcium hydroxide will dissociate to form Ca2 plus and two hydroxide ions. Of course, bearing in mind there are there's two OHs in that formula for calcium hydroxide. So just like strong acids, the definition is very similar, but this time they dissociate to produce OH minus ions, which in turn, they of course act as proton acceptors. They neutralize uh, acids, don't they? So they accept those hydrogen ions. So those are our strong bases. Of course, on the flip side of things, we've got weak ones as well. So in terms of examples of these, there aren't that many, but basically, you know, the ones you're gonna come across are ammonia, which is a classic weak base, and methylamine, okay? So there's an amine group, an NH2 attached to a methane molecule. Of course, you can get any number of examples of organic amines that can act as weak bases as well. So again, similarly to our weak acids, they do not fully dissociate, okay? What they do is they partially react with water to form the OH minus ions. So they don't contain the OH minus, the hydroxide ions themselves, but they can produce hydroxide ions by reacting with water. And I'll show you what I mean. So our ammonia, whilst it can't release hydroxide ions, it will react with water and basically steal a proton from it, hence a proton acceptor. This, of course, in turn makes the ammonium ion NH4+, leaving OH- ions in solution. Similarly with our amines, okay? So for methylamine, that can react with water, stealing a proton from it and leaving hydroxide ions in solution again. So what I'm saying here is that the big difference between strong and weak bases, it's a little bit more complex than strong and weak acids. Strong bases release hydrogen ions into solution, fully dissociate to do so, whereas weak bases don't have the OH minus ions. What they do is they react with water to form them, okay, making these positive ions in the process. So, of course, these then, these OH minus ions, they react with hydrogen ions themselves and act as proton acceptors, okay? So similarly though as well, last thing to uh, acids, what we can have are mono, di, and tri basic bases, if you like, okay? So we can have mono basic bases, okay? Which release, you know, for every one molecule of base, you're gonna release one molecule of hydroxide ions, so like sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and di basic, just like calcium hydroxide, for every one molecule of that, you release two hydroxide ions, okay? So there's certain things in common, but there's certain really important differences between acids and bases. I would go ahead and know your definitions, okay? Especially of your strong and weak of these, okay? And just make sure that you can write equations to show, all right? And not forgetting that weak acids and weak bases exist in equilibrium. Now, the last thing I'll say here is that there are, of course, calculations that you need to know. Now, you must be able to calculate the pH for strong acids, for weak acids, 
and for strong bases. You will not be asked to calculate the pH for these. It's a bit too involved really for, uh, for us to be doing at A-level, but certainly for these three, you're going to need to be able to calculate pH and use pH in terms of calculations. So that's what we're going to go into in the next few tutorials. But like I said, you need to know these definitions before you move on and start checking out the calcs.